Football League championship game is on the air. Hello, everybody, from San Diego, California, Balboa Stadium. Well, this is Herb Carnegie. I'll be calling the play-by-play -play today, along with George Rademan, one of the former great quarterbacks in pro balls, will be giving you his analysis of the ball game. As today, we actually have a replay of last year's championship game, played at Buffalo, New York, this year being played in San Diego, between the San Diego Chargers and the defending champion, Buffalo Bills. Actually, this will be the fifth time in six years that the Chargers have been in the title game under their fine coach, Sid Gilman, although actually they have only won the title game once, and that came a couple of years ago when they defeated the Boston Patriots. Last year at Buffalo, it was the Bills winning it by a score of 20-7, to 7, the first time the Bills ever had been in the title game. Well, the weather here today is just ideal. The temperature right now is 59 degrees. The humidity is quite low. We will have a slight wind, which will be out of the southeast. That means it will favor the club to our left as uh, we are sitting here on the south side of Balboa Stadium. And there's not uh, a cloud in the sky as the uh, two teams get ready to move out onto the field and we'll have those starting lineups a little bit later. But right now, we want to bring in George Radman, who will be giving you, as I said earlier, his analysis of the ball game today. And George, although the Chargers uh, are a slight favorite, the last time these two clubs met here at San Diego and ended the tie, this could be another good one today. I'm sure it will be. Of course, any championship game uh, is going to see a good game between two fine football teams because both of these teams had to come a long way to win their respective division championship. You know, it's sort of interesting to look at the statistics on these two teams for the past season. Uh, just at first glance, uh, statistically speaking, it would seem that San Diego would have it all over Buffalo because they've won just about all of the statistic championships in the American Football League this year. They were first in passing offense, first in rushing offense, and naturally first in total offense. And looking again at the defensive picture, they were first in passing defense, first in rushing defense, and first in total defense. The only place where Buffalo actually comes first to San Diego, statistically speaking, is in rushing defense, and there the Buffalo Bills were second in the league, but of course statistics mean nothing when you get down to the final game of the year, to the championship game. Both teams highly keyed for this contest today, and I'm sure we'll see a great one. George, you might mention that, of course, uh, as we all know, injuries are a part of football, but it would seem that the Buffalo Bills, at least uh, in the category of their receivers, have had more than their share of injuries this year as far as uh, being a club that has uh, repeated as the Eastern Division title and again playing for the championship this year. The Bills have lost three of their receivers this year. Of course, uh, starting with uh, Albert Dominion and then Glenn Bass, both of whom suffered knee injuries and have been out all year. And a couple of weeks ago, uh, Charlie Ferguson, who had replaced Bass at the uh, spread and was hurt, they were hoping that Ferguson might be uh, ready to go today, but he has not even been reactivated. And so uh, Buffalo could come into this ball game a little bit on the thin side as far as uh, receivers go. Also, uh, Buffalo will have one other starter out today, and that would be their uh, great center from Michigan State, Dave Beerman, who has been suffering muscle spasms in his back, and he will be replaced by Al B. Miller from the University of Syracuse, and he'll be uh, starting a second-year man, Joe O'Donnell, in the place of uh, B. Miller over in right guard, with B. Miller moving from guard to center. Also, San Diego has a couple of question marks today, George. Uh, uh, number one, their great fullback, uh, Keith Lincoln, who has an knee injury, and we don't know how much he'll be able to play today. Well, they've been quite fortunate here in San Diego this year in that uh, their rookie, Gene Foster, has filled in so very capably for Keith Lincoln, and that's a difficult thing to do because Lincoln is as fine a running back and pass receiver as you will find in professional football today. And again, looking at the Buffalo picture, I think it's the mark of a great team to see what Buffalo has done this year, losing Dubenion and Bass so early. It apparently wasn't too overworked during the season because he ended up third in scoring in the American Football League this year with 94 points. Charlie Warner and Edward Kowski deep for Buffalo, and it's a high kick. And moving back near the goal line, right at the one, is Charlie Warner. Charlie Warner to the 10, following with Kowski. Gets out to the 15-yard line, and there he's met by Jim Allison, and down he goes. Fumble the ball, I believe, after the whistle is gone, it'll be first and 10 to go for Buffalo at the Bills' 17-yard line. A 16-yard return for Charlie Warner. And there's one of the Buffalo players hurt on the kickoff. One of the Bills got shaken up on the kickoff return by Charlie Warner. Last minute replacements in the interior line there as they come up to the line of scrimmage now with both ends in tight and they have the Piker Roberson out wide to the left. Billy Joe and Ray Carr from the setbacks behind Jackie Kemp. First and ten for the Bills at their own 17-yard line as Kemp gives the ball off to Billy Joe, the halfback, trying to go outside and he comes across the... 20-yard line before he's ridden out of bounds by Speedy Duncan, the right cornerback for the San Diego Chargers. Billy Joe picking up five yards on a sweep around the left side, so it'll be second down and five to go. Opening minute of the ball game here at San Diego. 
Roberson wide to the right, and they give the ball to Carlson, who finds a hole over left tackle, comes up for about four yards before he's knocked down by the middle linebacker, Chuck Allen, along with George Gross, the left tackle. It looks like they're going to be just short of a first down. Very, very close, and I believe it'll be just a couple of feet now for a first down. We might have to have a measurement. And we notice that Jackie Kemp is taking a long time up the line of scrimmage, taking a good look in these early plays at the San uh, Diego defense. Paul Costa. Very tight. Kemp back for a pass, looking for Roberson, and he grabs that ball at the 35-yard line, spins away, but he goes out of bounds. Jim Warren, the cornerback, I believe had him out of bounds, although Roberson's still running. He gets to about the 40-yard line on the other side of the field before Speedy Duncan ran him out of bounds. And, George, that's one of the longest uh, lateral runs I've seen in quite a while. He went all the way across the field from the far sideline until he finally ran out of bounds over here on the near sideline toward us. San Diego continues with their overshifted defense in the line. Normally in the defensive setup, the defensive tackles will be lined up opposite the offensive guards. In this uh, setup, though, Ernie Ladd, who's the defensive right tackle, moves over and plays head on on the center, which causes the whole defensive line then to move toward the open side of the field. Must be quite a sensation to be a center and have Ernie Ladd staring down your throat. That was a 12-yard gain and a first down out of the 39-yard line. Robert Flank Roberson to the right. Second and seven for Buffalo on its own 42-yard line. And Kemp dropping back for a forward. Has good protection. Throws down the field, and it is intercepted by Jim Warren. At the San Diego 35-yard line. Jim Warren, the left cornerback, intercepts. And San Diego will take over first and ten to go at its own 33-yard line. Fine defensive play by Warren. Bo Roberson had been a flanker wide to the right. Kemp was trying to hit him as he came down over the middle, but Warren kept position on him so that Roberson couldn't get in toward the ball. Fine interception on the play. So now San Diego with Johnny Hale at quarterback. Paulo and Gene Foster, the running backs. And they uh, actually were in a, a double wing here as they move Foster up as a wing back, and Allworth is wide open as he grabs the ball at midfield and is brought down for a first down inside the 50-yard line. And it didn't take uh, San Diego long, George, to go to that passing formation. As you say, Lance Allworth was wide open on that play. He went down about 12 or 15 yards downfield and ran a hook pattern, faking as if he were going deep and then suddenly stopping in his tracks. And Hadel hit him immediately. Very nice timing on the play. A 20-yard gain on the play and a first down for San Diego. They're starting out from the Buffalo 47 of this series. Second out, 11 to go. So they have Allworth as the wide receiver on the right side. Using Norton as a flanker to the left. They give the ball off to Paulo. Following his two guards, he cuts in behind the block. Is hit by Harry Jacobs and Mike Stratton, the two linebackers. Harry Jacobs backing up in the middle, and Mike Stratton on the right side caught him and brought him down after a short game to the 46-yard line. So it'll be third down and nine to go now for the San Diego Chargers. San Diego nothing and Buffalo nothing in the first period with nine and a half minutes left to go. 46, and now Jim Allison. A rookie from San Diego State is punting, and he gets off a very short kick off the side of his foot, coming over to the right side lines, and it is downed by Miller Farr at the 27-yard line. So that was just a 19-yard kick off the foot of the rookie, Jim Allison, who hadn't actually kicked too much this year, but uh, he had been looking very good punting in uh, practice and had replaced uh, Johnny Hadel as the punter. There's time on the field now with a score, San Diego nothing and Buffalo nothing. Keep both ends in this time and use Allworth as a flanker to the left side. Foster and Lowe, the running backs. And a pitch quickly back to Lowe, trying to cut the right end. He's at the 10, a 15, 20. Lowe following two blockers at the 40. Down the sidelines across midfield before he's wrestled out of bounds by Hagan Clark. Beautiful run by Paul Lowe, who appeared to be caught along the line of scrimmage, but broke loose from a tackle, streaked down the right sidelines behind a convoy of blockers, Walt Sweeney and Ernie Park leading away. And he has finally pushed out of bounds on the Buffalo 44-yard line. A tremendous run by Paulo, and we certainly see now why he led the league in rushing, George. And he came very close to being stopped back there at the line of scrimmage. Did a nice uh, job of avoiding one would-be tackler back there before getting behind Walt Sweeney, who did a fine job of convoying him down the field. 47-yard run by Paulo. Allworth, flank to the left. To Surik and Norton, the two ends are in tight. Close formation of backfield, but Hadel's going to pass. Dropping straight back to you, avoids the on rush. Runs out to his left. 
Now he's in trouble again, and down he goes. Tom Day, the right end, pounced on him with Harry Jacobs, the middle linebacker right there. A good rush put on by the Buffalo Bills. They had Hadle in trouble. He got out of one jam, but ran into another one. It's big Tom Day, the right end, hauled him down at the 47. He had loss of three yards on the play, second and 13. And that time they had sent Lance Allworth deep down the field, obviously trying to hit him on the long pass pattern, but Butch Bird was with him all the way, covering him very effectively. That was one of the reasons that Hadle had to run the ball, that and the defensive line of Buffalo, who put a lot of pressure on him that time. The three receivers, Foster, Kasurik, and Allworth all on the right side. Norton split left. Hadle running back. The pass is tripped up back at his own 45 on a beautiful ankle tackle by Tom Sestak. The all-league right tackle from the Buffalo Bills, just as Hadle was getting ready to let the ball go, Sestak dived through the air, grabbed him around the ankles, and tripped him up back at his own 45-yard line. So a loss of eight makes it third and 21 to go. Formation, they have Allworth as a wide receiver on the right side. They're using uh, Foster as a slot man on the left, and a long pass for Allworth that's going to be overthrown. Booker Edgerson was trying to cover him on the play, but the pass was overthrown, and Allworth was about two steps behind it. So it'll be fourth and 21 as Hadle went for broke there with 21 yards to go on third down. Overthrew the pass. So now San Diego will have uh, Jim Allison back apparently to kick again. The rookie from San Diego State. And Buffalo is going to have three receivers back. Butch Bird, Edward Kowski, and uh, the short man will be Hagood Clark, who's back uh, more or less as a blocker. It's a good pass from center. But gets away a very poor kick off the side of his foot again. And it's taking a backward bounce. Millifar downs it at the 46-yard line of Buffalo. So that kick went only nine yards from the line of scrimmage. And the rookie, Jim Allison, who got away a 19-yarder his first time, having his troubles here uh, punting today. Actually, San Diego's regular punter, Rick Redman, a linebacker, is out for the season, has undergone surgery. Then the uh, Chargers turned the punting over to Johnny Hadle, but... As I said a while ago, Jim Allison had looked so good punting, and he had kicked a few times in league games. I decided to turn the punting chores over to him, but twice in a row now, he has hit the ball off the side of his foot. Norton wide to the left and all the way to the right. And they have a Foster as a wingback or a slot man on the left side this time, and Hadle's back to throw. Down the middle again, he's got a man open. Don Norton at the 35, slips the tackle. Norton across midfield before he's brought down. Don Norton. Fine effort. Grabbed the ball around the 33, slipped the tackle, and moved all the way down to Buffalo's 44 before Mike Stratton, the right linebacker, could bring him down. And it's first and ten to go now for the San Diego Chargers. A 35-yard gain. That's the end of the first quarter, and the score is San Diego nothing, Buffalo nothing. Leg uh, playoff for the Western Division title. Johnny Hale breaking him up there now has Allworth. Line to the right, he gives the ball to Foster, who finds a big hole over the middle before he's ridden down from behind by Tom Day, the right end. But Foster had a gaping hole open up in there. Sam Grenice and Ernie Park and Walt Sweeney opening up a big hole for him as he barrels down to the 34-yard line. It'll be just about enough for a first down. It will necessitate a measurement. All worth wide to the right. That ball out of bounds, George, and that could have been a wise decision. Booker Edgerson uh, did double duty on that play. He was the one who bumped Allworth over there, knocked him to the ground, and then he ended up chasing Hadle out of bounds. So he got in play uh, on both ends, knocked the receiver down, and then finally made the passer run out of bounds with the ball. Yes, sir, and quite a Cinderella story as far as uh, the defensive man, Booker Edgerson. He was a free agent. So it'll be second and 12 now for San Diego. Back on the Buffalo 35-yard line. They have Allworth flanked to the left. Gene Foster and Paul Lowe, the running backs behind Hadle. Hadle dropping straight back, looking downfield. Now it runs out to the left. He may run. He's at the 35. The line of scrimmage down to the 30. He slips and down he goes. But Mike Stratton and Harry Jacobs and Ron McDowell all there on top of him as Hadle ran the ball for seven yards, finding no one open. Moves it down to the 28-yard line, which uh, gives him seven yards and brings up third and five to go. 13 and a quarter minutes left to go in the first half. San Diego nothing. And Buffalo nothing, but this is uh, the only really long, sustained drive that we've had by either club thus far. A reserve quarterback will hold the ball at the left hash mark. Not too much wind at the moment as Trevino puts it up, but it's partially deflected, and it isn't going to be uh, no good. It hits on the five-yard line. Down uh, at the five-yard line, it was uh, Jim Allison who went down to cover the ball for the San Diego Chargers. 
It looked like uh, Stratton got in there to deflect the ball for Buffalo. Right now there's timeout on the field. The score is Buffalo nothing, San Diego nothing. Carson, who was hit around a 43-yard line, and he had Jim Warren, a Bud Whitehead, rather, the safety man, riding him piggyback style until he finally dragged him down out near midfield at the 48-yard line. Second down and two to go. Ray Carlson, a seven-year veteran from Duke University at Durham, North Carolina, who started the year at halfback and then was moved to fullback on a very fine individual effort there. Second and two to go at the 48. The Bills putting Roberson out as a flanker to the right. They have Ernie Warlick in there now and Paul Costa, the two ends tight. And they give the ball off straight ahead to Carlton with a first down as he barrels inside the 45-yard line of the Chargers. Brought down by Chuck Allen, the middle linebacker. As Ray Carlton straight ahead to the 44-yard line of San Diego as he picked up eight yards on that smash and a first and ten to go for Buffalo. First and ten, the Bills on the San Diego 44-yard line. Jack Kemp back for a first down forward. Runs to the right, lobs one downfield. Costa's open, and he grabs the ball near the sideline. And he is out of bounds on the San Diego 22. A great over-the-shoulder catch by Paul Costa. Grabbed that ball just before he went out of bounds. Down on the San Diego 22-yard line, a 22-yard play. And a first and ten to go now for Buffalo. Over there and stand next to Lou Saban, who is on the phones talking to assistant coaches up in the press box. So I think in this series of downs, Lou Saban has called quite a few of the plays by alternating Rutkowski and Warlick. Third down, six to go for the Bills on the San Diego 18-yard line. Roberson wide to the right. Jack Kemp fading to pass. Looks the field over, throws in the goal. Underneath the goal, touch for a touchdown. A touchdown to Ernie Warlick, who had just come in for Rutkowski. And Ernie Wallach right underneath the goalpost grabbed that pass that was lined right in his chest there by Jackie Kemp. And Buffalo scores to make it 6-0 with 4.59 left on the clock here in the half. And George there was a beautifully executed forward pass play. Nice throw, a nice catch, and also fine blocking by the Buffalo offensive line. Jackie Kemp had plenty of time to stand back there and pick out the best receiver, which he did. Darrell Lamonica now will hold for Pete Gogolak, who was the second leading scorer behind Gino Capaletti of the Patriots. Gogolak puts it up and through the uprights. Pete Gogolak kicks the extra point, and Buffalo moves out in front 7 0 as they drove 60 yards for the first score of the ball game with Ernie Warley, a real veteran, eight years in pro ball from North Carolina College, who actually had not uh, played too much the latter half of the season but with uh, three of the Buffalo receivers on the injured list, the latest being Charlie Ferguson. Warlick pressed back in the service today and made a fine reception of Jackie Kemp's pass right underneath the goalpost. This time they're in their trips right with three receivers to the right side. Hadel back to throw. Runs out to the right now. At the 25, he throws on the run, and it is caught beautifully by Lance Allworth at the 45. A diving reception by Lance Allworth, who was the wide receiver on the right side. Up to the 45-yard line and a first down on a 15-yard play there to Lance Allworth. Once again, one of these pass patterns where San Diego sends five receivers downfield. Buffalo defensive line has been pretty effective in putting pressure on Hadel. One of the reasons being that they have sent quite frequently all five eligible receivers downfield, which doesn't leave too many people back to block for the passer. Hadel driving quickly back, gives the ball off to Lincoln, who's hit behind the line, gets away, and gets across the 45-yard line before Butchberg comes up, slows him down, and then Tom Day jumps in there along with the left linebacker, Johnny Tracy. Keith Lincoln, who's had an injured knee, just got into the ball game a few moments ago, picked up three yards after first being hit behind the line of scrimmage, but got away and picked up three yards to make it second down and seven now for San Diego at its own 48. Three and a half minutes to go in the first half. Buffalo, a one touchdown underdog, leading in the ball game now, seven to nothing.
Donnie Hadel. The long count there. He's in trouble, and the safety blitz was on. George Sames, the safety man, rushed in there, and then Harry Jacobs, the middle linebacker, came through to put the tackle, actually, on Johnny Hadel back at the 34-yard line. George, that seems, uh, is one of the best at that safety blitz. For the Chargers, Johnny Hadel standing back on his 20-yard line. Butch Bird and Edward Kowski are back as the receivers. And here's a high, twisting spiral kick. It'll give the uh, men plenty of time to cover. But Bird grabs the ball, runs up the right sideline from the 30 to the 35. He's across midfield, down into San Diego territory, across the 40 to the 20, the 10, the 5, and Bird scores for Buffalo. A tremendous run right down the right sidelines by Butch Bird and Buffalo now leads 13 to nothing and Georgia had no more than gotten the words out of my mouth and I thought that was a kick that would give uh, the men pretty good opportunity to cover there for San Diego. It was a fine kick by Hadel and it was nice and high so his people had time to get down under the ball but Bird took it and in just about two steps he was past all of that first line that came down. Then he ran the ball very intelligently because Hadel had a crack at him, so Bird just waited for one of his offensive blockers to get in front of him and wipe Hadel out of the play. The Lamonica holding, Pete Gogolak kicks the extra point, and now Buffalo has taken a 14-0 lead with two minutes and 29 seconds to go here in the first half. Getting out wide to the left this time for San Diego. Allworth wide to the right. Lincoln and low the backs. And Hadel fires one down the field, intercepted at the 32-yard line by Jacobs, who's knocked down at the 20. Don Norton knocked him off his feet as Harry Jacobs, the middle linebacker, a six-year veteran from Bradley, intercepts for Buffalo and brings the ball back from the 32 back to the 20-yard line. So Buffalo has another scoring chance. A little over two minutes to go in the first half, and Buffalo with a first and 10 to go on the San Diego 20. Harry Jacobs with the interception. Each team has had an interception today. Jim Warren intercepted one earlier for San Diego. Two teams now are getting the two-minute warning. Second and ten for Buffalo from the Chargers' 20-yard line. And Kemp gives the ball off to Billy Joel, who tries the right side. And he is knocked down before he gets to the 15-yard line. Picked up two or three yards on the play. Nailed by George Gross and Kenny Graham. Ball with Dick Deegan, the left linebacker. A gain of three makes it third and seven for Buffalo. But, of course, uh, they are very much in field goal range right now. Gogolak, who set a new league record for field goals, kicked, he kicked 28 this year. And the kick is away. It's partially blocked. Rolling into the end zone. It was partially blocked by Speedy Duncan. Who normally plays right cornerback, but he is exceptionally fast. And, uh, George, he's usually the type of fellow you try to get in there to block those kicks. And that was a, uh, a very important play for the Chargers, too, because a successful field goal then, of course, would have put Buffalo ahead by 17 points, uh, meaning that the Chargers would need at least three scores, two touchdowns in the field goal, to get back in this ball game. So there's a big difference between 17 to nothing and 14 to nothing. Chargers still have a minute and 25 seconds here in the first half to see if they can get on the scoreboard now. So, you know, in pro football, a minute and 25 seconds can... And able to club to move a long way. This is Lowell going to his left on a wide sweep. He gets out of one tackle but runs into trouble and is down at the 25-yard line. Nailed by Tom Day, the right end. <clears throat> Five-yard pickup for Paul Lowe after the 25-yard line. Second down, five to go with the ball at San Diego's 25-yard line. They're now going to bring Jack McKinnon in to replace Don Norton, who was shaken up on the last play. So Jack McKinnon, who played his college ball at Colgate University, will come in and replace Don Norton. And during the timeout, John Hadel, the Chargers quarterback, came over to the sidelines to talk to Sid Gilman to decide just what plays they would go with here in the closing minutes of the first half. We might mention that both of the running backs in the backfield for San Diego right now, Lincoln and Lowe are both very effective passers. Now, we've seen Lowe run wide quite a few times so far in the ballgame. I wouldn't be surprised if they'd come back along about here and have him fake the end run and try to hit Allworth deep downfield. Third and five to go as Johnny Hadel calls the signals. Dropping straight back for a four. 
Winding up and throwing long downfield. All the at the 42. Goes to the 45, and he is hit on a jolting tackle by Mike Stratton. <coughs> The right linebacker really put his shoulder into Lance Allworth that time, but only after Allworth moves out to the 47-yard line, the 22-yard gain on a first and 10 to go for San Diego. And a beautiful pass pattern that time by the Chargers as Kasurik and uh, McKinnon went deep down the field, cleared out the, the zone, you might say, and Allworth from his flanker position then cut in over the middle into the zone that had been cleared by the other two receivers. He was wide open about 20 yards downfield. And Hadel got the ball to him right on the run. Beautiful pass by John Hadel. Defending league champions. Johnny Hadel dropping back to throw. Decides he'll run it. He's at midfield. Looking for someone to lateral to. He's at the 45-yard line. Spins away from another tackle. Goes to the 40 before Harry Jacobs can put the stopper on him. A 14-yard line by uh, Johnny Hadel. Moves it down to the Buffalo 40-yard line. Now, timeout by the Chargers with 52 seconds left, and that uh, exhausts the number of timeouts remaining now for San Diego here in the first half. First and 10 to go at the Buffalo 40. Down in the uh, ball game earlier, that time was a pass receiver. Now here's Hadel dropping back again, looking downfield, throws, and it's caught beautifully by Jack McKinnon at the 30-yard line. Looks like it'll be enough for a first down for San Diego, but they have no more timeouts left with a half minute to go in the first half. They spot the ball at the 29-yard line, which gives San Diego its third first down. They have moved all the way from their own 20, and here's a sideline pass to Dave Kasarik, who's out of bounds with the 26. San Diego didn't even uh, bother to huddle, and George, that's a play you see the pros uh, using more and more. See it quite frequently at the end of the half or at the end of the ball game when they have run out of timeouts and they have had a completed pass downfield. They will just line up without a huddle, and they have this automatic play where the flankers on each side will just go down about three steps and break toward the sideline. Passer will try to hit them just as they go out of bounds, and if they're not open, the passer will just throw it over their heads out of bounds, the main purpose of the play being not to gain yardage, but just to stop the clock. Ends in tight, all worth a flank of the right. They give the ball off to Keith Lincoln back at the 30-yard line. He's down to the 25-yard line, and he's hit by Bird and two or three other of the Bills. Tom Day coming in there. <laughs> along with Harry Jacobs. There's Keith Lincoln. Moves just to the 24, a two-yard gain. Five seconds left to go. They're going to try a 31-yard field goal from the left hash mark. Trevino puts it up, and it is wide to the left. No good. With Don Bro holding the ball, Trevino's kick sail wide to the left. They really have to hurry to try to get uh, that kick away before the gun went off. Ending the first half. So that is the end of the first half, and the score is Buffalo 14, San Diego nothing. The score is the Buffalo Bills 14, San Diego nothing. And our halftime guest, whom we'd like to welcome at this time, is Joe Foss, the commissioner of the American Football League. Joe, uh, we're finishing the sixth year now of play in the American League, and of course you're finishing your sixth year as commissioner. You're pretty happy with the progress you've made in these six years? Well, George, we've made our best progress this past season. We're up uh, at the end of the season now, 23%. This is the third year in a row that we've uh, had an increase in our attendance of over 20%. So things are really looking up. Well, and with the new stadiums being built in the different cities in the American Football League, I would imagine we could continue to see a rise in attendance in the future. Well, next year, moving into the new stadium in Oakland, that will give us a big boost. And then here at San Diego now that they've uh, voted to have a new stadium here that should be ready in two years. And improvement on all of the other stadiums, uh, it, we're really going to show a great increase uh, for the next three, four years for certain. And then you'll come in with the big stadium in Miami next year, the, uh, the ninth team in the league down there. That's right, with the uh, uh, great stadium there, uh, it should mean a big increase. Uh, and of course, uh, we're trying to get a stadium at Boston. That's one that uh, uh, looks like we will get, but it's probably four or five years away yet. I believe they're talking about a dome stadium up there, aren't they, Joe? Yes, uh, and a stadium that's really built for football. Uh, sort of a, a complex with a sliding roof and uh, uh, that should make it a, a really a, a sports center of the world when it comes right down to it. They want to give uh, our friends in New York a little competition. Of course, uh, with the great Shea Stadium there, one of these days they'll fill it in the uh, gap there out in center field that will give it.
will give us an additional 17,500 seats that we can use. And due to the fact that we've been playing to capacity crowds there uh, this past season, they've really taken a hell out there. Joe, you've added a ninth franchise to the league with the Miami Dolphins coming in. I believe there are plans then for the following year, the 1967 season, to bring a tenth franchise in. Is that right? Right. I would say uh, now that we've got uh, Miami off and running, and they've been doing a great job on signing, and uh, their uh, season ticket uh, campaign will start immediately uh, after the first of the year. Uh, and as we mentioned, going into the Orange Bowl, uh, that should really make it a top-notch franchise. The 10th team should be named early in 1966. We'll probably discuss it at the uh, annual meeting at Houston, the 16th of January, but I don't look for any definite action to be taken at that time. We'll probably do our preliminary work and then sometime early in the spring have another meeting, at which time we will decide exactly where that 10th team will be. Well, Joe, I know you have some other duties here at halftime, so we want to thank you for stopping by and visiting with us. And also, we want to congratulate you on the fine job you've done for the past six years as commissioner of the American Football League. I've enjoyed it, and it's been made possible by all of the great fans that have turned up at the stadiums and those that have listened and watched us uh, from the time that we started. It took a, a lot of people uh, that had a lot of uh, fond thoughts of us and that thought we'd make a go of it. And we've acquired these fans uh, more and more each year. My thanks to them all, and a very happy New Year to them. Thank you, Joe. We'll be Roberson, blank line to the right, with a first and ten for Buffalo at its own 27. Jackie Kemp, Billy Joe, and Ray Carlin behind him. Kemp's going to throw on first down. A long pass downfield for Roberson, and he grabs the ball inside the 30. Run out of bounds by Jim Warren, who apparently thinks Roberson caught the ball out of bounds. Roberson made an over-the-shoulder catch as Kemp led him perfectly down the far sidelines or the right sidelines as Buffalo moves downfield. Roberson caught the ball in stride with Warren right there with him, and Warren was just able to force him out of bounds at the 24-yard uh, line, call it, the 24-yard line. And it had to be a perfect pass by Jackie Kemp as Roberson was pretty well covered downfield. The defender, Warren, was right with him as he ran downfield, but Kemp laid that ball in there just perfectly. Being uh, played over there by Speedy Duncan, the right cornerback. Throwing to Ernie Warlick down the sidelines. He's got it at the 12. Ernie Warlick picks up the first down as the big uh, fellow just went slanted out towards the sidelines, grabbed the ball away from Jim Warren, the cornerback over there. And out of bounds, he goes at the 17, 12-yard line. A five-yard pickup. They only needed three yards for the first down. They got five. Now on the charge of 12, Roberson wide to the left. Kemp gives the ball off to Ray Carlin. Cutting back over right tackle. Carrying tackles with him as he goes to the 7-yard line. Dick Diggin, the left linebacker. Hauling him down along with Kenny Graham, the safety man. A four-yard, uh, let's see. Wait a minute. They're going to spot it closer to the six. So make it a six-yard pickup. Ray Carlton, who has played a great game, running out of the fullback spot today for the Buffalo Bills, moving to the six-yard line. So it'll be second and four for the first down, or six yards for the Bills to go for the touchdown. Undoubtedly, they would go for the field goal. So it's quite a decision to decide what play you can come up with that will gain three yards down in this tough territory. Tough indeed, down inside that five-yard line. Third and two to go. And they give the ball off to Billy Joe. Puts his head down, bangs over left tackle. And it looks like the Chargers stopped him short of the first down. A defensive line rose up. Earl Faison, George Gross. Frank Buncombe, the right linebacker, was in there. The gain is to the three. They're going to be short of a first down. It'll be fourth down about a yard to go. And as George uh, told you, if they missed the first down here, they would probably try for the field goal. And that's exactly what they're going to do with Pete Gogolak coming in and trying a relatively uh, short one here. And they haven't moved the ball to the middle of the field, so he's right in front of the goalpost. The uh, purpose of that last play, I guess, was just to get it away from the hash mark and right out toward the middle of the field. So it should be an easy shot here for Gogolak. From the 11-yard line, Gogolak with Darrell Lamonica spotting the ball, puts it right through the uprights. Gogolak kicks an 11-yard field goal. And so the Buffalo Bills now take a 17-0 lead. Time left in the third period, 9-21. This is Ed McMahon, your Saturday uh, afternoon on host, the field. among some recent... 
Gogolak kicking off for Buffalo. Speedy Duncan on the three to the 10. 15, 20, 25, 30. He's out of the open. And Charlie Warner grabs him at that field and brings him down. Charlie Warner saves the day for Buffalo as Speedy Duncan was on his way. But Warner stayed back there and brought him down on the Buffalo 48-yard line. A 49-yard return for Speedy Duncan, who, as I mentioned earlier, set a new American League record for punt returns this year. Breaking uh, Oakland's uh, Claude Gibson's old punt return record of last year. San Diego trailing 70 to nothing here for the first and 10 on the Buffalo 48. Give the ball up to Keith Lincoln, cutting it over left tackle down to the 40-yard line before he's dumped by Ron McDowell, who rode off a block by Jack McKinnon to make the tackle by the Buffalo Bills. A fine defensive play by the defensive end Ron McDowell of Buffalo. Keith Lincoln moving to the 38. He got 10 yards. We may have a measurement, and we will. You have to see if they made the first down. <clears throat> All worth wide to the right as they send uh, Johnny Hale back deep for a long forward. Decides to run at the 35 to the 30-yard line. And down he goes on the 28. Chipped up by Tom Day and Harry Jacobs and Mike Stratton. And once again, Hadel appeared to lose his footing a bit as he tried to avoid tacklers downfield. That happened several times in the first half when he went back to pass and decided to run with the ball, started downfield, and uh, his feet slipped out from under him when he tried to cut. So once again in the second half, we see that the turf is just a little too slippery for John Hadel as he tries to run downfield. Keith Lincoln and Paul Lowe set down behind Johnny Hadel. Hadel on a fake. And he's going to be caught behind the line of scrimmage. Johnny Tracy, the left linebacker, got in there. Along with Tom Sestak. And they dropped him back at the 36-yard line. And there appeared to be quite a mix-up in the San Diego backfield as Hadel turned around, obviously looking for a back to hand it off to, but there was nobody there. So an apparent mix-up in the San Diego backfield. That's the second time in that series of plays uh, earlier in the series, they had a fumble on an attempted handoff, so the San Diego boys are going to have to regroup over on the sidelines and get their signal straight. This time they move Eddie Rutkowski as they end the uh, split wide to the left and Frank Roberson the other way. Kemp back to pass with long yardage. Slows down the field deep, and it's caught beautifully by Roberson at the 40. He was wide open across the 45-yard line before he's wrestled down by Kenny Graham. As Roberson again beat his man over there, corner man uh, Jim Warren, So it'll be a, let's see, a first down for Buffalo as the game carries them out to the 48-yard line, a 37-yard gain on the play. Good pattern there, George, by uh, Roberson. Roberson's been doing a fine job all afternoon and getting himself open downfield. Of course, he has tremendous speed, and they have to always worry about his taking off and going deep. But he's been doing a good job of getting open, and Jackie Kemp has been doing a fine job of getting the ball to him just as he makes his break. First and 10 at the 48-yard line. Buffalo coming up with a big uh, play there to get out of uh, their own territory. Here's Billy Joe around left end of the 50, across the 50, and down to the 45 before Bud Whitehead and Speedy Duncan running out of bounds. Billy Joe running out of the halfback spot today for Buffalo, turns the left corner, moves it down into San Diego territory, and they'll spot the ball right at the 45-yard line, a pickup of seven yards. Second down, three to go for Buffalo, which is leading by 17 to nothing. They scored twice in the second period on a pass to Ernie Warlick. Paul McGuire, who played his college ball at the Citadel. Boots it over this way towards Graham, who's watching the ball hit on the five. It's going to be jumped on by Warner down on the one. Charlie Warner covered that ball on the one-yard line. George, you can't do much better than that. No, it uh, almost appeared that he hit a nine-iron shot in there because the ball came down just about on the one with a bit of backspin stopped, and Warner was right there to grab it before it had a chance to go into the end zone. Just take over on their one-yard line. Halo back from the end zone. He's going to throw that ball. Lobs it way upfield, and it is intercepted by Perry back on the 45-yard line of San Diego. Back to the 40, 35, 30. 25 and pushed out of bounds by Paul Lowe. Dave Kosurek, the intended receiver, but Bird circling uh, around him, grabbed the ball on the run, 
and carries it back to the 20, let's see, 23 yard line before Paul Oak can push him out of bounds. So Butch Bird is having himself quite an afternoon for Buffalo. He returned a punt 74 yards and a touchdown in the second quarter. Now he intercepts a pass and brings it back about 25 yards to the Charger 23 yard line. Buffalo with a first and 10 to go. Time left in the third quarter, two minutes and seven seconds. Edward Kosky will be a receiver wide to the right and uh, Roberson to the left. Kosky actually has a flanker over on the right side. As Kemp called the signals, a good fake in there to Carlton. Kemp back to pass. In trouble as he's chased by Petrich and down he goes. Fumbled the ball, but the whistle had blown. The whistle had blown. George Gross calling it. Bob Petrich was in there to make the tackle, the right end from West Texas State. Bob Petrich made the tackle. And although Kemp fumbled the ball, the whistle had blown, so Buffalo retains possession back at the 32-yard line. A nine-yard loss. Kemp calling signals. Dropping back to pass, looking for Roberson, who breaks up to the outside and slips, and the pass is overthrown. Right now, we'll pause 10 seconds for station identification. WGY, WGFM, your general electric station, Schenectady. Al B. Miller will snap it back. Darrell Lamonica will spot it from the left hash mark. Gogolak kicks it. It's high enough and far enough, and it is good. The kick is good. A 39-yard field goal by Pete Gogolak, which puts the Bills ahead now by a score of 20 to nothing. With four in stopping them before they could go for long gains. And that is the end of the third quarter with a score, Buffalo 20, San Diego nothing. From Balboa Stadium, San Diego, California, this is Herb Carneal along with George Ratterman, the sixth annual American Football League Championship game as we start the fourth period. Down here, they're close enough for Pete Gogolak to have a good try at it. The ends in tight, Ernie Warlick and uh, Paul Castor, Roberson flanked to the right. They give the ball off to Billy Joe, following Joe O'Donnell, trying to cut in, goes to the 25. Billy Joe is still driving across the 20 before he's brought down. Dick Diggin, Kenny Graham, and uh, Chuck Allen all down there for San Diego. Another determined run there, this time by Billy Joe. Those two running backs for Buffalo, Billy Joe and Ray Carlton, have... Really been running hard today, and that time Joe picked up 11 yards to the 19, where it's first and 10 to go for the Bills. Jack Kemp on a fake to Joe, slips back at the 26-yard line. As he turned the pass, his feet shot from beneath him, and down he went. The uh, right end, Bob Petrich, was right there on top of him. So it'll be third now and 17 to go at the 26-yard line. The ball is directly in front of the goalpost. They will use up a lot more of the time. Time is certainly on the side of Buffalo right now. A 32-yard attempt from the left hash mark by Gogolak, spotted by LaMonica. It's up and away, and the kick is good. Gogolak has kicked his third field goal of this half. 11 minutes and 45 seconds left on the clock. There's time out on the field, and the score is Buffalo 23, San Diego nothing. Pretty difficult uh, with so little time remaining. Johnny Hale back for a first down forward pass. Fires it over the middle to Keith Lincoln at the 25-yard line. Roll down around the 26 or 7 by John Tracy. Out at the 27-yard line, Lincoln on the receiving end picks up three yard, uh, seven yards, making it second down and three to go. And once again, the open field tackling by the Buffalo linebackers and secondary has proven outstanding on the few occasions when uh, San Diego has threatened with long runs by completing uh, passes or having a runner break through the line of scrimmage the defensive linebackers and secondary have been really deadly in their open field tackling Don Norton is back in there now for San Diego wide to the left and here is Hadel being snowed under inside the 20 yard line they had the blitz on Two linebackers are in there, Mike Stratton and John Tracy. They blitz the uh, outside linebackers as Harry Jacobs, the middle linebacker, was back there for pass coverage. And both linebackers got to Hadel and dropped him back at the 19 for an eight-yard loss. He had uh, two wide receivers using Allworth as a flanker over to the right. Hadel back to throw. And the ball is deflected by Jim Dunaway. The big left tackle stuck up his arms as the ball left the hands of Hadel. And Dunaway just batted the ball off to the side, incomplete, so now it's fourth and 11 to go. 
So again, it's been a great effort on a part of the Buffalo defensive unit. For fellows like McDowell, Dunaway, Seth Tank, and Tom Day up front. Back this time, Ed Lutkowski standing on his own 42-yard line. Adel gets away an end-over-end -end kick, hits on the 46-yard line of Buffalo. Rutkowski's going to let her roll across the 40, down to the 38, 37, and that's it at the 37-yard line. Let's uh, call it actually closer to the 38-yard line. So Buffalo now, uh, which of course wants to use all the time it possibly can, and we have just 10 minutes and 10 seconds left to go in the ball game, and the Bills are leading by a score of 23 to nothing. Stone, to Joe, rather, and he's across the 45 to the 46-yard line. A penalty flag went down, and let's see what that's about. As George Gross made the tackle for San Diego, I believe they had one of the chargers for grabbing the face mask uh, there at the bottom of the pile. Well, let's see. The ball is spotted at the 46-yard line. Eight minutes, 20 seconds left. Buffalo staying on the ground to use up all the time they can. Ball goes to Billy Joe, trying to turn a corner on the left side, and Whitehead, the safety man, comes up to nail him at the 40-yard line for a yard loss. Bob Whitehead, a five-year man from Florida State University, in on the tackle. It'll bring up third and 10 to go now for the Bills on the San Diego 40-yard line. Ray Carlton coming back in. And Don Stone going out for Buffalo. The ball's almost directly in front of the uh, goal post, just a slight angle to the left. And it's a fake, and LaMonica picks the ball, goes downfield, and it's caught by Jacobs at the 28-yard line. John Tracy, who was an eligible receiver on the uh, field goal kicking team, grabbed LaMonica's pass as they uh, take the field goal, and LaMonica, who wants to stop the ball, took the pass from center, got up, and flipped the ball out to John Tracy. LaMonica had a rather pleasant choice there in that he had about three receivers downfield, all of whom were open. San Diego had ten men up on the line of scrimmage, all intent on getting in and blocking the field goal attempt. Their 11th man was way back near the goal line, ready to field the field goal if it fell short. So when the Bills sent some receivers downfield, they were all wide open. 23-yard line of the San Diego Chargers. LaMonica calls the signals as Roberson flank to the right. Give the ball off to Billy Joe, who's caught behind the line of scrimmage, Steve DeLong. A rookie from Tennessee at Ernie Land, the right tackle stopped him. At the 25-yard line is where they're going to spot it. And now Gogolak comes in to try for another field goal, although you never know. The last time Gogolak was in there, they faked it, and LaMonica completed the pass to keep Buffalo's drive going. And this will be a 32-yard attempt from the left hash mark by Gogolak, with LaMonica holding it. Gogolak makes it good, it will set a new championship game record. Gogolak already has kicked three. The snap is good. The kick is up and away, high enough, long enough. No good. No good. Wide to the left. Gogolak's kick went off to the left. So the score remains 23 to nothing. With three minutes and 47 seconds left to go in the ball game. I guess he'd have to say he's entitled to miss one occasionally. <laughs> Wouldn't he? He's done a fine job this afternoon, not only this afternoon, but for the past two seasons. Send Norton wide to the left, flank all worth to the right. Hales back to throw that ball, trailing by 23 points. Throws over the middle to Allworth at the 25, 30. Allworth to the 35, out to the 40-yard line, and goes to the 45 before Johnny Tracy knocks him down after Harry Jacobs had slowed him up some. Tracy put the stop on Allworth at the 45. A 25-yard gain for Lance Allworth, who, of course, is a threat to go all the way with that ball any time he grabs it, and he had a better than 20-yard average uh, each time he caught a pass this year of an unusual pass pattern and that uh, once again the Chargers sent five receivers downfield but that time four men went down deep and Allworth who was wide to the right as a flanker just delayed at the line of scrimmage and finally came across the middle rather shallow after the other four receivers had taken the defenders deep with them. Allworth shaken up a little on the play. He out of the ball game as does John Hadle now the quarterback for San Diego. Three receivers to the left side in there now for the San Diego Chargers. As Don Burrow, the youngster, drops back to pass. Fires one over the middle to Farr, and he makes a beautiful catch inside the 40-yard line. Miller Farr going high here to grab the roll away. John uh, Tracy and Tom Day made the tackle down on the 36-yard line of the Buffalo Bills. And a fine pass by Don Burrow then. Farr had about three defenders around him, but Burrow drilled the ball right between them. 
Dan Bro dropping back. The safety blitzes on and seams. Rides down. Dan Bro back around the 45 yard line. Maybe even a little farther back. They had the safety blitz on there with George Seams coming through to nail Don Bro back at the 48 yard line. 12 yard loss makes it second and 22. I think that Seams runs that player in college at Michigan State and actually uh, played two or three games when he first came up to Pro Bowl uh, as a running back for the Buffalo Bills. Second and 22 now for San Diego. Back at the Buffalo 48-yard line. A minute 37 up to go in the game as Burrow retreats. Now decides to run. He's tripped up at the midfield strike. Hit first by Sestak, who slowed him up. And then down he went at midfield. As Jim Dunaway pounced on him for a loss of two yards, making it third and 24 to go. And it's third and 24 to go. The ball is in midfield as Don Burrow retreats for a desperation pass here for San Diego. He's in trouble. Can't get it away. And down he goes. Back on his own 47-yard line. Tom Sestak coming through to nail him. Tom Sestak, the all-league tackle, who was, uh, I believe, something like a 17th round draft choice a few years back. But what uh, progress this fellow has made. It's the third or fourth time he's gotten to the quarterback today. That's it. The ball game is over. That's the end of the game and the final score. The Buffalo Bills 23, the San Diego Chargers nothing. We'll be back in a moment with the final wrap-up of today's ball game. Well, it's all over here at Balboa Stadium before 30,361. Pretty much of a stunning upset, uh, I would say, George, with uh, Buffalo. Not so much the fact that they won the ball game, but how they won it. Well, they, they came to play, as the saying goes, and uh, scored twice by uh, scoring touchdowns, three field goals by Gogolak, and just completely outplayed San Diego this afternoon. In fact, by the end of the ball game, uh, the San Diego Chargers were a completely demoralized football field, or football team. I don't know of anybody that you could pick out on the Bills uh, as being above his teammates. It was a fine team effort. Jackie, Jackie Kemp was awarded uh, the trophy or the award as the most valuable player in today's game, and he certainly did a fine job, but all of the Bills deserve a lot of credit as uh, do their fine coaches. They've done